Welcome to the unboxing and the feature review of the MZE 720. Uh, I'll give my thoughts about the, the model and um, at the end, uh, stay tuned because I actually do a comparison. I do a few audio tests between all of my different um, portable recorders and this player and we have a bit of a shootout so you'll find out which one I thought was the best sounding at the end and um, yeah thanks to uh, CBITS Tech for requesting the video how you going mate uh, anyway on with the video hey guys just got a quick video of uh, for you today um, just got this from Japan it's um, a player only model a mini disc player um, yeah I've just got so many other mini disc players that I don't, I don't really want to take outside with me but I want to you know, have mini discs on the go. So yeah, this is just a quick unboxing. Here's the unit itself. Okay, so it looks okay. There's a little bit of um, damage to the section at the front. But there doesn't seem to be too much scuffing going on. On the back, there's a little bit more wear. I'm not super concerned about it. I want this to kind of be an everyday driver. I just want it to sound great and work. And I, I hope it does both. Apparently this one, this model is um, one of the best, best models. It's uh, sound wise. It's very light as well. Very light, and very small. Here's a disc here for comparison. Now, this player, they say this is a brown colored player, but it's not. It's actually like a really complex pink, actually. Like a really dark, or a darker, muddier pink. Uh, it's actually a very, very nice color. The writing is orange. Not sure how smart that is as a design decision, um, but let's take a look inside. Oh, we've got a disc. We've got a disc. TDK, excellent. 74 minutes. I think this is what, uh, similar to one of the ones that Neo had on um, the Matrix. The moment of truth. I don't think there's any corrosion there. Let's try and turn this on. Ooh, can he do it? All right, what else have we got in the box here? We have the remote, an original Sony earphones. We have the wall charger. Luckily, I've got a step down transformer for this because it'll be 100 volts, and in Australia, we've got uh, 230, 240 volts, I believe. And here we have the original stand and the battery, which will probably be no good right now. Okay, so we've got a uh, little inline remote. That's one of these ones that you pull up. And you've got play fast forward um, when you push it in and volume up and down when you pull it out. So it's a nifty little one. Um, I think the, um, I, don't, I don't know what people think of these. Um, the, the regular cigar ones that sort of um, don't have this well, this protrusion here, um, uh, and and the um, the audio comes out here. I don't know what people what people think of these. Um, do you prefer do you prefer this sort of more premium model, or do you prefer the the other version where the audio comes out um, at the end here? Do you prefer the audio coming out here? Um, be good to get some some feedback. Um, if these are a little bit more um, difficult to use, if they're plasticky, if they're if you think they're um, unreliable, uh, it'd be good to get some feedback. Yeah, again, and yeah, we've got a, a little dock here. 
Interesting design. The base is actually a different color to the main unit. Um, base is kind of a gunmetal gray. Whereas the main unit, as I said before, was a really complex shade of pink with gold. And I really, really like it. It's, I like these complex colors. Okay, let's, uh, let's finally, it's time to power it on. Let's see if it works. We have sound. Wow. It does sound really good, even with these terrible earphones. <laughs> um, we'll talk about the features in a bit. So, as with many of you, I'm sure most of you have mini disc recorders. Um, I read somewhere online on mini disc community that um, actually it's best to have players because you can damage the, um, the magnetic right heads um, pretty easily in the in the recorders, um, and therefore um, it's actually best to get a player. You know, if, if, if you were anything like me, it was like, oh, don't worry about the player-only models. They, they're for chumps. No, uh, the player-only models are really good. Um, so it's got great weight. It's got uh, great size. Um, and it's also got great sound, apparently. And I'm going to be testing that out against some of my other models uh, later. It's got this HD digital amp, which um, I'm interested in testing out um, in compared to some of the other ones, especially next to the RH1. I've got an RH1 and I just want to, you know, test it out. I thought that that sounds amazing. So we'll give that one a go. Um, a few little buttons on the top. One of the cool things about this model is um, the little light. So you can, it, it, uh, it gives you different LED, you know, LED colors. There are three colors, I think, um, it's essentially um, for two reasons. It's for the group mode. Um, it tells you that you're in group mode or otherwise. And it also um, tells you where you are with the battery. Let's test it out. Uh, let's test the audio out. Um, no point getting something that's going to be uh, to sound terrible. So let's test it out against a few others. The um, N10, the MZN505, 710, 700 and of course the RH1 for my test I'm going to be using one disc I haven't labeled that yet but it's it's kind of a good one because it's got some it's got a lot of bass it's got a lot of kind of quiet areas as well and um, some horns and that kind of stuff and I'm going to be using these Bose headphones quiet comfort um, I know probably a lot of people have got a lot of opinions about Bose headphones, but um, yeah, they're good. They're good enough, I think, for a test like this. Um, this is not scientific at all. Um, it's essentially just um, hearing. I think we, we, we don't, we trust the numbers too much um, in, in things like this, and we can get obsessed by the numbers. You know, this one's better than that one, you know, but, but do we really know that? <laughs> You know, do, do we actually test our ears and trust our ears to hear the differences? So, um, same headphones, not plugged into any um, uh, remotes, just into the unit directly uh, via uh, wired. And um, uh, yeah, I'll give you my thoughts. I do apologize for anyone who's in the audio industry or knows more about audio than I do. Um, I've kind of made up some of my own metrics here, um, some of my own terms. Um, so you'll probably get a chuckle but at my ignorance, but um, I'm just doing it really for my own benefit to find out you know, which of these models I prefer. But if you get any benefit out of it too, then, um, then that's great. So you're seeing images of the uh, MZN10 now, um, an impressive sounding unit, um, and it should be for the 10th anniversary um, edition of the mini disc. Um, the bass wasn't all that punchy; it was uh, it was fairly flat actually. Uh, I gave that a five out of ten. Um, the treble was was very good, very very sparkly and beautiful. Um, the clarity of that I gave for a ten. And the, the treble I gave a nine. 
Um, the depth of that one, I couldn't f really, didn't really feel like I could hear too much going on with all of the, the instruments that were going on. Um, realism, realism was pretty good. Um, it sounded like, yeah, like for, especially for the singing range, um, I gave it a seven. And overall, I enjoyed this a lot. It kind of sparkled, it tingled in my ears. Uh, not in a bad way, but a good one. But it was really good, but but the bass didn't move me. You know, the bass, in, in that sense, it seems like a bit bit more top heavy, you know, a bit more in the sort of higher range and, and just kind of forgot forgot about the, the bass sort of, sort of range. The RH1, um, very, very impressive machine. This was, this was the best sounding machine by quite a margin, I think. The bass was a seven. That was about the highest, except for this uh, 710. Um, the treble was very nice. Oh, it just sounded brilliant. Um, the treble was a nine, the clarity was a 10. The depth was nine. Um, you could just hear everything. Uh, realism was seven. And enjoyment. This enjoyment score is also about, um, you know, did it fatigue me? Like, was it too sharp on my ears? Like, could I go for hours listening? Yeah, I gave it a nine. Uh, I really did give it a nine out of ten. Um, the R900. Um, for bass, I gave this one probably one of the worst scores. The worst score. Four. Um, for treble, I gave it a five. For um, clarity, I gave it a four. Uh, for depth, I gave it a six and realism a six and enjoyment a six. Um, it sounded fairly flat compared to the RH1, uh, which was um, sad, you know, like I, I liked this unit and there've been other recordings that I've thought sounded great on it. Um, anyway, on to the um, MZN 505. Um, the bass was a six, treble a six, clarity a six. Um, Depth was only a four. It sounded fairly muddy, this one. Realism was seven though. And enjoyment was overall a seven. So about the same as the N10. This was surprisingly good. Um, it's, it's a fun machine. It's good sound, um, surprisingly rich. Um, a bit muddy. Um, not that clear um, as far as depth goes. Um, and those some of those highs, some of the... The highs on the treble were a touch on the harsh side. You couldn't go listening to that for a long period of time with really sort of high music. <clears throat> uh, the MZN 710. The bass was an 8. The bass was brilliant on this unit. Uh, very impressive. Even better than the RH1. The treble was a 7. The clarity of that treble was a 5, I gave it. Uh, the depth was only a 3. So the worst of all for the depth of being able to hear lots within the music. Um, the realism, I'm giving this a seven uh, because yeah, it really did feel like someone was in the room. Um, and overall enjoyment, I gave it an eight, which is the second highest. So I thought it was a balanced machine and a very enjoyable machine. That's, that's what I wrote down for the 710. The R700, I gave the bass a six, the treble a five, clarity a five, the depth a seven, uh, realism a five, and enjoyment a five. It was a bit flat um, at times, um, and there were some upper voice registered, but there were some upper voice registered that sparkled a bit. I think once you got to a certain area, pretty high area, it just sounded beautiful. But everything else was a touch muddy, and flat. Um, the E720. Now here we go. Here's what you've all been wanting to, to hear. The bass was only a six. Uh, bass wasn't super big on it. The treble was seven and clarity was, was seven as well. It was lovely sounding machine. Uh, the realism was a five and the depth was also a five. But my overall enjoyment of this machine was, was a seven. Um, I thought it sounded, I thought it had a really nice sound. Um, yeah, like it felt to me like a mid-range sound, like not as good as the RH1, but you know, I'm not going to walk around with an RH1 in my pocket. The question is, 
Will I enjoy walking around with the um, E720 in my pocket? Absolutely. You know, and, and it's also a plus that it, it weighs so little and it looks really good, love the color. And um, it's such a small piece to go in your pocket. It's just, um, it's just easy to get around. It's, it's much more mobile than some of those other devices. Um, and you're also not gonna freak out uh, about if you're gonna scratch it or if you're going to um, destroy it in any particular way. It's just gonna be a really good, good machine, I think. And um, yeah, um, it lived up to my expectation. And, um, but if anyone knows any better machines that they prefer, just let us know in the comments, uh, especially the, the um, player only models. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, like and subscribe if you if that's what you want to do. Thanks.